Alright, so everyone should have on their desk their rubric, their essay, and their prompt. Put your name on your rubric, put your essay, your prompt, and your rubric together, and give it to someone you haven't spoken to this week. Give it to someone you haven't spoken to. I'm not like, like, read your work here, people. Like, I'm not looking for you to make new friends. Go, trade and grade, let's go. You don't have to put it in order. Three, two, one. All right, what I'd like you to do is please, someone trace with my boy Benji. You're just going to leave him here, ladies? Those looks to get up in here. Thank you, Lily. What a nice human to be. I don't know. 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 I write it on everything I do. Okay, here we go. You should be reading prompt one. I, you're behind already, I can tell. Eight, first period was on it today. You are not. So, you should be reading question one, part A. I planned it for you, so it should all be right. For God's sakes. Shh, what? Huh? No, Evelyn's going to plan out her essay. Well, you I'm waiting. They... Need to have made, you need to make sure that in one, when they talk about the spread of enlightenment ideas, that they are talking about John Locke, Montesquieu came up, that these ideas are now reaching other parts of the world, yes? And they should have referenced other places like Latin America, the Caribbean, yes? That these ideas are now reaching for the first time. Is that happening in A? Then for uh, implementing enlightenment ideas, these are actual other revolutions that are occurring in other places. Like Haiti, for instance, you could have easily talked about Bolivia leading 15, 16, 17, an obscene amount of revolutions throughout Latin America. Uh, talking about other people would be the evidence. Is everyone clear on that? That's what should have happened in A. Is everyone, everyone did that. Okay, part B, we talked about Napoleonic Wars and Napoleonic Code. When they were explaining it, they need to say that an, uh, Enlightenment ideals are reaching into other countries that are not having revolutions. Does that make sense? That was the whole point, okay? Because the Napoleonic Code allows other countries to reach. Here we go. So everyone should have done well on question one. All right, flip it to two. Answer all parts. Identify and explain one factor that influenced Russia to develop its military capacity. You read it quickly. Here we go. What is one thing that is going to increase its military capacity? What do you got, Kira? Crimean War. Absolutely. And what is this, what's their evidence? I hope they were dropping some names, right? Oh, uh, French and English. There you go. Okay. What else could you have said? Anyone else write Crimean War? What could be better evidence of just citing countries that beat them? Uh, Abby. Yes, that's a really lovely one. Yes, it's really good evidence. They broke the Treaty of Westphalia, which is why uh, England and France get so involved so quickly. What else could you have said? It starts industrialization back in Russia. Like, what could be a nice example of evidence you could throw down? Jackson. That's passion of serfs would be good. You could have also thrown down the wit system, correct? Okay. All that would have worked. What? Did you say Russo Japanese war? That's 1905. And the other thing is that 
How are they using it? Um, after Tsar Alexander II died, uh, Nicholas II decides to enter war with Japan, and then they, they, they get beat really bad. No, that's not telling me why they're developing its military capacity, no. All right, B, identify and explain one way in which the industrialization of Russia caused the development of new cultural identities. So it has to be culture-based. What do you got, Michael? I can't hear you. What? They're seen as a power? No, they're not. Not after the Crimean War. They're declining. Guys, come on, come on. What is something culturally? What do you got? Matthew? Okay, what about it? Um, it's kind of weird, though. Once they industrialize and start building railroads and all that, and they're... Uh, okay, they're not fully industrialized, though. Like, partly, so, like, they're building some railroads, like, like the trains, and so they're raised that too late. How is that cultural? Well, because once they do that, they can actually, because they're so both diverse, and they can actually control more and spread their culture easier with the railroads. I accept Russification. Good one. What do you got, Jackson? Um, could you say that, like, Okay. Um, what's going to be your evidence? No, because it's not cultural. There is one thing you could have said that would support that really beautifully. I'm asking if any of your peers know. So they're going to start unifying and clear uh, and trying to make themselves better. So what do they do culturally? Who do are uh, who are they kicking out? The pogroms, right? Guess what you could have used. That would have worked really nicely. Okay. All right. What else? What do you got, Miss Murphy? Would unification of rail, like by railroads, rail, 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 What's their evidence? Uh, no, because it's not really culturally. But yeah, they're cool. All right. Anyone else? What do you got? Okay, very cool. Absolutely. That's a huge one. I don't know why it took so long for us to get there. Absolutely. Well, what do you got? Um, like, caused, like, difficulty to get jobs, but, like, and then it provides rough conditions to work and build the trans railroads. Okay, I mean, like, that little trans railroad's railroad is weird. But, yeah, uh, emancipation of service is a huge cultural one. All of a sudden, people had work, now they don't have work. That's going to change everything. All right, C, identify and explain one way in which Russian industrialization affect international politics 1890-1900. Keep in mind, Bloody Sunday is out of time. Russo-Japanese War is out of time. So look at their answers. They have Russo-Japanese War. I'll only accept it in one way. Someone had a very good argument last period saying the Crimean War stimulated this whole industrial... Uh, emergence, that confidence in a semi-industrialized country is going to raise national pride. However, uh, their confidence is going to be plummeted again in another conflict like the Russo-Japanese War, which is going to show again the weakness of the Russians. It was very well explained, not better than what I just said. I, I accepted that. What do you got? Does war happen in the like yeah, period five, but they gave you a specific time period. Does it happen in like that? Specific? What war? Oh, it does in the Russian No, it happens in 1903 or something. Yeah, it happens in 03 because the Bloody Sunday is a direct outcome of it. What do we got? Sophie? Um, can you say that like, the um, repression during the 1900s leads to the Russian Japanese War? What's their evidence? <clears throat> Yeah? Absolutely, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. <coughs> Who else? So everyone else is taking the O? What do you got, Sydney? What if they said, like, the Russo-Japanese War, but then they included, like, China's spirit influence in the Russian Civil War? Like, so they had to How does that have anything to do with Russia? Yeah, but we're talking about Russia. Affected international politics, so you're saying it's going to create rivalry in the region? Do you say rivalry in the region? Then it won't score. Anyone else? She tied your back there. She really wanted to be the damn boy. All right.
So I'm assuming we were taking a lot of zeros on that one, yes? Cool, flip it. Score it, flip it. Huh? Yeah, we did. Well, that was what we were just doing. Hey. Uh, nope. All right, use a political cartoon to answer the following question. Identify one factor why this cartoon could apply in 1450 to 1750. What do you got, Garrett? Um. Well, sure. my person said um, was when Europe made Australia a penal colony. And no, it doesn't happen until the early 1800s. Yeah. Nope, out of time period. What do you got? Uh, when the Portuguese and Spanish split up the world. No. True. No. Uh, Why? It's France, it's France and England, and it says this cartoon. How can you tell it's first? Yeah, I mean, it's Little Napoleon and it's uh, British dude. You're supposed to recognize him. What do you mean? It's their uniform. They also have their flags and their crests behind them. But you can't see Sorry, darling. It was a little easier to see the color. Wait, so we wouldn't score because of Nope. Wait. Has to be English and French. Because that's the damn hacks, people! So you really didn't know? That's so sad! That's so sad, but yeah, it wouldn't score. You should be able to identify them. That's their uniform. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Well, now that I think looking up the cut. Yes, thank you, Tanner. We got some honesty here. Now that we're looking at it, can't you tell it's France and England? Okay. No. Lies. 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 There you go. Wait, I thought it was This is just a style. No. What? Okay, wait. So Britain's cutting up Oceania. Why yeah. is Australia not the penal colony? Because it's, it doesn't it doesn't happen until after 1750. So then, what are they doing in Oceania? They've got all of their uh, colonies in India and stuff. It's a colony. It's not our sphere. In Oceania. And it's also America. Yeah, it's also. <laughs> it's also the United States. It's all that stuff. Because look, if you look on the map. The you know, part between where France is getting Europe, there's Europe, uh, there's England right there, and then it's the rest of the world. This is so stupid. What? Could you state the Seven Years' War when they get India, Canada, and all that? It's a beautiful answer, man. It's a beautiful answer. What do you got, Camden? Um, could you talk about like um, British influences in America's like language change and all that? Yeah. What? Is Napoleon? Nope. He doesn't come and become emperor until 1802. All right, so factor why this could apply. England and France are dividing up the world during colonization. Friend, they have colonies all over the world. Yes, they're trading. British, French. Cool. B, that went over well. Uh, one factor why this cartoon could apply to 1750, 1900. Jackson. Um. No. Because, like, they're separating Europe from all of America because they can trade from America, so, like, they're splitting up the Western. Actually, that's a pretty damn good answer. That's a pretty good answer. That's a damn good answer. Weird. I would never have come up. Yeah, that would work. That would work. Damn, Rebecca. That would work. So on the AP, if we can't see that, like, we don't know the picture of Jesus writing, can we write it all along? Zero. Yeah. Are they going to give us happy pictures like this? Yeah. Is it going to be a color? color. <laughs> no color. It's so obvious. There's no colors in English. Yeah, it's like, obvious. Like, I actually love like, it. I'm talking about the search stuff that we had was online on the like, uh, no, like, I made this question. There's no answers online for it. Unless someone scanned it in. 
Yeah, I mean, he looks it up, but, you know, we were going off the line. <laughs> we can't How do you not know what's in You can't look it up. Right here. How do you not know? Yeah, MP, just, don't put your face up like that. You now I know you're shady. Person, if you look at this. Yeah. Okay. What? He has the whitest features. If you look at the picture and someone says, what could this apply to in 1452 17? No, it's England, France. Wait, but Napoleon wasn't even. Hi, we could keep moving. Or we can sit here and complain. Cool. All right. For a period of 14, 50, 1900, provide one other country not drawn. Trey, what would be two countries you could really talk about here? Uh, Spain and Portugal. Yes! That would be a perfect time to include them. Treaty of Tordesillas would be a great one. What else could you have written, MP? Can we talk about Belgium? Yeah, hell yeah. They're not drawn. Belgium scores. Hell yeah. Will. Talk about like China. What are you going to talk about China? Of that it's getting torn up? Yeah. But who, what's your evidence? Like the opium war, forcing the side on equal treaties, like the Treaty of Nanking. Okay, but like, guess all that opium war, Treaty of Nanking, is all... All... And no, then I referenced Japan coming in, and then they were talking about, like, the Sino-Japanese war, they want influence over North Korea, or not, just all Korea. And, um, because it wasn't, like, divided at <laughs> uh, I'd be very wary because the first three things you listed is all about England. I, no, but I did use other stuff. Though, just like if you're two. pulling out, then they would score it. Okay. It's just you spend a lot of time talking about your uh, England. What do you got, Camden? Um, so, um, with the scramble for Africa, where yes! but it said it for B. Yeah. Not for for B? Country. Yeah, it's still 1900. Okay. Yeah. So 1900. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Scramble of Africa. As long as you're not talking about how England and France are and where they are, as long as you're talking about how Belgium went in and took over Congo. Wait, but for me, like for the cartoon between Britain and France. Yeah, of course. Imperialism is a perfect answer for that. What do you got, Lily? Um, well, for C, was Japan work? Yeah. Yeah, they're not pictured people. You couldn't write about a country in, 19, in England and France. You could write about any damn country. You can write about the Americas. Someone wrote a really good one about the Monroe Doctrine during this one. What? Um, for the Napoleonic Wars. Yeah. Uh, no, it's B or C? Uh, B. Yes. We're in C! <coughs> but yes, Napoleonic Wars are a perfect answer for B. Are we less fussy now? <laughs> Two points, man. You're fine. Flip it. All right. Here is a picture. Explain one factor that forced the Japanese <laughs> westernization of Japan. Greta, what is the clear and obvious answer? Yes. If you didn't write that, what the hell are you writing? <laughs> What else could you have written, Abby? No, I wouldn't accept it. Because it's not the forced westernization of Japan. The fall of the Tokugawa into the Meiji, I'm not really going to accept. Because why did they get the westernization? In order to adopt. But how? why are they adopting westernization then? They didn't wake up on a Tuesday and said, hey... Countries we've never seen before are doing this thing called industrialization. We're under no threat, but we're going to industrialize now anyway. Who does that? No one. No, Russia got their butt kicked in the Crimean War and was like, oh, damn. I should probably industrialize. The Japanese are terrified being held hostage by Commodore Matthew Perry, and they're like, oh, shit. we got to do something. So guess what they do? They're like, ah, we gotta do something. Here we go. And that's why they overthrow their government in order to do it. So the real answer here is who? Matthew Very, 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 very carefully worded. Maze restoration. Very carefully overwhelming with evidence. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. But I wouldn't be thrilled. Jackson. I just have a question. I'm not really good at this, but um, did the United States want the industrialized? 
Yes, they wanted their resources. They wanted an ally. They noticed that they were there. They're close to China. Because the United States, we have a very complicated history. We're known as the land of the free, home of the brave, all that stuff, yes? But we started our country with slaves. So we always kind of flirted with this whole, we're just like the rest of the world kind of thing, correct? For <coughs> being honest, yes? So we started this, every man is free, everyone has a right, but who isn't voting? <laughs> slaves, women, you know, so we have a little bit of a tainted past. Did we imperialize? Yes, yes we did. Philippines, Hawaii, okay, all that stuff. Did we, are we the worst of the colonizing forces? No, but did we do it? Yes. The, the, the United States wanted pieces of China. Why would we want pieces of China? What is everyone making in China? Lots and lots of money. We wanted to be a part of it, but we can't do that because, like, it's clearly wrong, yes? So we're like, hey, this country isn't open to anyone. Why don't we force them to trade with just us? Guess who's going to make a good amount of money off of it? Us. But we still have the moral high ground here. Can we agree? Throughout our history, we've always tried to maintain the moral high ground. We've gotten our hands dirty. We definitely don't have a clean, a clean slate here. But we've always tried to maintain the high ground, which is why we forced Japan to trade with just us and only us for a while. Um, and that's how we exploited them for our benefit. Also benefited them. Let's not lie about that. But Two factors that show Japan chose to embrace westernization. What could you have easily said here, Abby? Major restoration would definitely score really, really well. Okay, what else could you have written? Sydney. Okay, what about it? Okay, and it showed that what they were doing was right, correct? Put them in world power, gave them prominence, and P. Could you say how they feared, like, being like China? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That would be a good answer. What do you got, Sophie? Um, the strengthening uh. of their Navy. Huh? The strengthening of their Navy. Okay, what's your evidence? Um, their Western ships and steamships and their first ships. Perfect. From Britain? Did they mention Britain? Yes. Perfect. Oh. Ian? Um, the, their elimination of the <laughs> Yes, it's perfect. Absolutely. The fact that they're literally literally killing their past. Absolutely. All right. For every point that you've taken away, you better have written why. I'm not asking you for an essay, but just be like, uh, off topic, out of time period, just something quick so it's very clear why. You're going to flip it to the back and you're going to write two positives, one negative. Don't be vague and say, job well done. Wowzer. Aw, so great. No, no one cares about that crap. Okay, get them a sticker. Who cares? What you need to be writing is like, uh, essay three was your best essay, plenty of evidence. Um, I really liked your use of, uh, Rebecca, what was yours that really blew off that I loved? Which one? The Monroe Doctrine was very <laughs> smart. Uh, stuff like that, right? Give them actual credible feedback. Don't say, great job. And then on the, on the constructive criticism, give them something they can actually use. Like, be careful of your time periods. You had some issues here. Um, I would look back at the Japanese. If they made a bunch of Japanese errors, I would say, hey, I think you need to look at the Japanese history a little bit more. Um, maybe look at your, you know, political mm -hmm. cartoons a little bit better. <laughs> so, give them three pieces, two pieces of positive, one piece of constructive. I'm passing around the stapler right now. The stapler is priority. As soon as it hits your desk, you're going to staple the rubric on top of the prompt with the essay in the back. So as soon as it hits your desk, you better be passing it. So, on the AP camera, they're going to be able to stick to like that? They can. How are we supposed to be able to identify the guys? How, like, I, like... I'm not sure we're going to have to look Just because Napoleon's small. Well, and the big hats, that's their traditional so guard. British flag on the back, um, so on the left. Yeah, British and flag on the back. So short. Absolutely, you could use that for B. Wait, where's the no, Back here on a seat. 
And, like, how British does that guy look, man? Look how big his nose is. Look how much it's in the air. Like, prim proper. That's so British. And if you get, like, Ocean. How many images of Portugal have you seen? Exactly. So it's probably England or France. All right. What I would like you to do is go find the person you spoke to. When you get that stapler, you better stop everything and staple and move it on. Go. Go talk to the person you got it from. Go. <laughs> What time do you people leave? Ten seconds. Keep that staple moving. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. All right, please listen up. You are going to drop off your essay right here as you're leaving class today. Is everyone clear? If you do not drop off your essay while you are leaving class, it will be marked late. And you're going to lose dumb points for no reason. She is so over you. It's great. <laughs> so please make sure you drop it off in the front. Okay? So everyone needs to take out notes. We're moving on, man. Let's go. Let's start killing people. Like really excited about I think this stuff's cool. I think it's cool. We already passed the thing, man. No, it's a will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. I would write week 25, World War One. Uh, Russian Rev. We're in six, man. What's the date? 1914 to present. Yeah. Okay, it depends on the read. It depends on who it is. It's either 1900 to present or 1914 to present. What week is this? World War One and Russian Rev. Okay, so uh, your first section is going to say causes of World War One. Causes of World War One, people. That's your first little heading you're going to write on your damn notes. Okay, please listen up. So, um, I love the World Wars, and I love World War One because I don't think it gets enough cred. You know, everyone's like, oh, Nazis, oh, you know, all that stuff. Now, World War Two is pretty cool, but World War One, man, they are straight up murdering each other face to face. There's something about that. We're going to melt faces. Yeah, what do you think? Mustard gas, man. It just literally melts you. It's crazy. Have you seen Wonder Woman? No. Wonder Woman is World War One. So if you go, it's on HBO now. I saw this. I saw a second of it this week. It's so good. It's so good. I feel so empowered after I left that movie. So, did you just call it a ripoff? Oh wow! Because no one's ever gone on a plane and plane blows up, huh? You've never seen any other movie that looks like that? Step off my girl, okay? We got one. You as a white male have every other one, okay? We got one chick, let her be. Thank you kindly. Here we go. So, I have pictures. I have diagrams. It's a little bit different format than I've taught you before, but I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to write down. Is everyone clear on that? I got pictures, man. We're going to, like, we got death everywhere. So, first major thing is, is that imperialism is still going strong. Imperialism equals competition is what I would write down. All these nations are trying to get the best countries, uh, best colonies in order to claim as their own, correct? Pass it forward. I think we're done. This is a cause. This is a cause, yes. Imperialism equals... Oh, my poor Benji. Okay, imperialism causes competition. Nationalism. That's true. Thank you, Henry. You just toss it wherever you like. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, you're so kind. 
What a nice young man. Okay, nationalism. It is a deep devote. What did you say to ruin it? I said I'm a giver. Oh, okay. <laughs> nationalism is different than patriotism. Now, I am an American patriot. I'm very proud of my country, okay? I believe I do live in the best country in the world, but I'm honest about its flaws, okay? For instance, I am incredibly disappointed this morning. I'm not shocked, but I'm disappointed this morning that the Florida State Legislator this morning voted down the assault rifles and said, no, nah, we're not going to ban it. But now porn, pornography, is now a health issue, and they're investing over $6 million in figuring out if Pornography is hurting the youth of Florida. That's my thought. That's my thought of exactly. No one's dying from pornography. You know what I mean? That's happened yesterday. So when I think of the United States, I see their flaws. I see how wonderful we are as a country, and I'm very proud to be a patriot. If you say you don't like America because it's an imperialistic power that goes unchecked here in 2018, I would say, ah, I see where you're coming from. But let me tell you about all the incredible things America has done, is continuing to do, and will be doing. Okay? Nationalistic. You say America stinks. They beat the crap out of you and punch all your kids. Nationalistic is incredibly aggressive. I am an American. If I was nationalistic about America, America is the greatest country of all time. And anyone who says anything negative about America and calls us an imperialistic power, they go punch in the face, kick them in the ribs, spit on them, and walk away. Okay? So nationalistic or nationalism is going to cry, uh, cause aggressive <coughs> rivalries. Okay? Aggressive rivalries. Every country thinks they're the best country on the planet and they're willing to fight over it. Okay? You have your industrialized powers. This is cause number three. Your industrialized powers are Austria-Hungary, Germany. They're down here at the very bottom. <coughs> Germany, Austria-Hungary, Great Britain. Russia is still, it's not an industrialized power. You're going to write sort of. It's at the bottom, at the very bottom of the slide, Karen. This is your industrialized countries. Italy, France, and they're going to write U.S. sort of. So after Russia, you're going to write sort of. After U.S., you're going to write sort of. No one really takes us that seriously. World War I is where we change the game here, people, for the United States. People start taking us much more seriously. Uh, so seriously, they call us doughboys. That's because we were fat. We were fat by then. No, we weren't fat, but they've been, Europe's been fighting for four, uh, for three years, so they're like starving to death and stuff like that, and then the Americans joined the war in 1917, it ends in 1918, and so when the Americans show up after not fighting a war and getting three square meals a day, we look fat compared to everyone else, which is why Pillsbury is known as the, his uh, World War One vet started Pillsbury, so when the guy goes, woo. It's a, it's a reference to World War One. What do you got? Which ones were the sort of? Uh, U.S. and Russia. Italy and France. All right, so there's competition between, just listen, we got competition between imperialism, we got competition with nationalism, we've got competition between industrialized powers trying to gain the control. Look! How timely! Oh, yes, crazy. hello. I, well, obviously, he's wearing a red coat. He's British. But they didn't put that short. in the picture. And he's short. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Your fourth cause is militarism. Militarism. It's written up at the top. Now, militarism is when each country builds its military to its maximum. Okay, so think about it. If Catherine had 300 machine guns and 4, 000, uh, 4 million rounds of ammo, does she just stack it in a pile in her house and say, wow, look at my guns, or does she go out and use them? Use them, because why? Because she has them. If you have them, you use them. Okay? So if England and France have these massive stockpile of weapons and all this brand new technology, do you think they're going to be satisfied playing war in their backyard, or do they want to go kill people? Kill people, because you have all this stuff, you want to use it, correct? That's the big thing. With militarism, 
okay? You want to use it, okay? Now, what country today is militaristic? Russia's got a flares, absolutely. North Korea is a perfect example. Why would you say North Korea is a perfect example of it? Military parades is a perfect example of militarism. When you put so much focus on your military, your whole identity is based on the size of your military, correct? That's North Korea to a T right now. Okay, Russia does do its demonstrations as well. A couple weeks ago, if you remember, whatever your thoughts are on Donald Trump, he wanted to do a militaristic parade. He wanted to do a military parade through Washington, D.C., right? Because he really liked that the French do it. The French have flares for it too, Okay. A lot of the U.S. military, 95% of the U.S. military said, hell no, why? They didn't want to increase the tension, right? If we're putting our military on display, who's going to put their military on display? Well, North Korea's already doing it, but we don't want to fight with China. We don't want to fight with Russia. These bigger things. See ya. Thank you, my darling.